Hey guys, how's it going? So today I want to share a few books with you that I think will help you get better at data structures and algorithms. These books are not only useful if you're trying to learn data structures and algorithms for your school or your day-to-day -day work as a software engineer, but also with technical interviews in mind. So without further ado, let's begin. Before you begin, if you're new here, I make videos on software engineering, productivity, technical interviews, and that kind of stuff. And if you're into similar things, please subscribe and hit the notification bell icon so that you don't miss any new videos. All right, let's begin. So the first book I recommend is this little guy called Computer Science Distilled. I came across this book probably a year ago, and I think it's an amazing book just to get your head around all the topics that exist in computer science. Just by looking at the size of the book, you'll probably guess that this is probably not an exact exhaustive list or a detailed explanation of the material, but I think it's an amazing starting point that will at least get you familiar with the topics that exist in the space. It briefly touches all the topics that you need to learn in order to be good at data structures and algorithms, especially for your technical interviews. It's also very lighthearted and has a good sense of humor, so it's not very dense to read. So even if you are just a beginner software engineer or you just started taking classes or you're switching from a different field, this is a really nice and easy read to get started. So this book is pretty interesting it covers your basics like ideas logic counting probability that you'll need as foundations before even starting algorithms it also has the introduction to your big O notation, counting time, and how things get slower or faster as your data size increases. Then it has the strategy section that will cover like iteration, recursion, backtracking, dynamic programming. Again, I can't stress enough that this is just an introduction to all these topics. I mean, some of these topics are huge, like dynamic programming, and they cover that in three pages. Like, there's no way. But the goal of this book isn't to make you an expert on any of those topics. It's basically to help you sort of build a dictionary of topics in your head. Let's look at an example of what I mean, right? Like there's a section here that talks about hash table. It says the hash table is a data structure that allows finding items in constant time. Searching for an item takes constant amount of time, whether you're searching among 10 million or just 10 items. Okay, you get the rough idea. You don't know in depth about what an hash table is, but it looks like it is pretty efficient and it stores things and you can retrieve them in constant time. By now, if you've followed this book, you've probably read the big O notation, so you kind of have a rough idea about what constant time means. So that's cool. Similarly to the array, the hash requires pre-allocating a big chunk of sequential memory to store data. Okay, but unlike the array, the items are not stored in ordered sequence. The position of an item occupies is magically given by a hash function. So this is what I mean. This book introduces the topic to you, but there are some of the harder topic, like how the lookup is constant time or how the hash table gives you such performance is sort of magic, right? It's not gonna explain you in depth how a hash table works, but I think it gives a great introduction, just one page so that you kind of get a very high level and basic understanding of what a hash table is. And this is very similar with everything else. So like there's a section in graph. We've seen graphs are the flexible data structure that use nodes and edges to store information. They're widely used to represent data Data, like social networks, nodes are people, edges are friendship relationships, telephone networks, nodes are telephones and stations, edges are communications and much more. That's it. And then the next topic goes for searching in depth. Searching in graph via depth for search, we keep following edges going deeper and deeper. And then they illustrate that via nice graph. Again, to illustrate my point, you get the idea, but you're not gonna get a full understanding. Final comment on this book is just the size itself. It's so nice and light and compact, easy to carry around that you can literally throw it in your backpack, especially if you're a student. And when you get your free time or break, you just pull it out, read it. Or if you're traveling, probably not right now during COVID, but you know, regular travel, you can just carry it with you, you know, just refresh some topics, you know. It almost makes a very serious topic like data structures and algorithms kind of fun with little colorful diagrams and just the size of the book. So highly recommend it, especially for beginners. So once you've graduated from that book, you wanna go ahead and get this book called Rocking Algorithms. This book also follows a very similar pattern of being very lighthearted, funny, uh, lots of diagrams to illustrate the point. 
but goes in more depth compared to that book. So once you've read that book and you've sort of have a vocabulary of words, you've learned that there is thing called hash tables that exist. You've learned that there's graphs and how they represent relationship between things. And you can search through them via depth first or breadth first, and you can do certain algorithms on them, but you have no clue how to do them, right? Like because that book doesn't give you any algorithms like actual pseudocode or any code. It's just an understanding and overview. This is very similar, but it goes into a little bit more detail. And then the table of contents for this book is very similar. You'll, you'll still get a bigger analysis. You'll still get the sorting algorithms, the basic data structures, greedy algorithms, searching, dynamic programming, that kind of stuff. But because you can see it's thicker, it's larger, it does go into more depth. It's like if that's level one, this is going to go level two. I'm, I'm going to focus on the same example for each of these books so you kind of get how in depth they go. So let's look at what this book has to say about hash tables. In the other book, you've learned that hash tables can give you constant time lookups and sort of how hash function makes that happen is magic, right? In this book, however, they talk about hash functions. What is a hash function? How does it store things? And then there are a bunch of examples, really nice. And then it talks about like time complexity, how a performance of hash table is not guaranteed, right? Like if your hash function is bad or not efficient, then you're not gonna get a constant time lookup. And then at this point you're like, wait, but the other book told me that it sort of magically happens, right? Like it happens for built-in hash functions and stuff, but now you wanna understand what the magic behind it is. This book's gonna explain you that. And then it also talks about collisions. That's what happens when a hash function tries to insert two different values to the same spot. That's when collision happens. And then it sort of introduces that. And then it also talks about when that the hash function can resize and that's called maintaining a load factor. So look, those things you didn't know in that book, but now you're gonna understand in this book, right? And again, let me re reiterate that this is also a very light read. It doesn't have any code. It doesn't give you pseudocode. It just gives you very illustrated examples and lots of graphs and diagrams to show you um, or to help you understand the idea even uh, better than that book. So I think it's a very natural progression to go from that book to this book. And still till now, you can go through these books without having much data structures and algorithms experience. You don't need that much. So even if you are like in school and you just started taking like the basic classes and you wanted to go a step ahead and kind of like get started early, these are great books to get started. Or if you are into like mechanics engineering or different sort of engineering you want to get to coding or you you're thinking about prepping for a big fan company interview like top tech company interview and you don't know what sort of topic you need to cover these two books will sort of give you an idea and you can gauge your understanding you know some these may come very naturally to some people and these books do help in that they don't talk about it in the technical jargon that most books do and it's very natural and they give real life examples so it's kind of help you grasp the topic so I think these are this is a great second book to have and then once you figure that out maybe you've done your own research you've gone online you've looked at it in a little bit of depth and you kind of wrote some code or you're in school and now you've taken the data structures and algorithms class that's when you bring in the big boy and this is this is a big one and it's it's almost like the bible of algorithms book it's called introduction to algorithms this has everything again those two books have same topic but in this book you will see much more technical detail it'll cover everything you'll have pseudocode you'll have your mathematical analyses and everything you re really need so let's look at the same thing on this guy all right in this case now we're talking about time complexities to begin with it even in the first paragraph itself it starts talking about collision but then it talks about how do you solve collisions and there's a technique called chaining it talks about that it'll give you much everything is in mathematical notation here and there are theorems and proofs and how you can get amortized constant time or you know like a upper bound and a lower bound to your time complexity is very mathematical at this level if you're understanding algorithms and if you've gotten this far you're you're good to go you know same with graphs representations of a graph we can choose between two standard ways to represent a graph where graph is a set of vertices and edges as a collection of adjacency list as an n or an adjacency matrix Either way applies to both directed and undirected graph because the adjacency list representation provides a compact way to represent sparse graph, those where the edges are much lesser than the vertices and usually that's the method of choice, right? Like, as you can see, it didn't take any effort to explain like how oh, graphs are like social networks and telephone communications, that kind of stuff. It's 
going directly to the mathematical and very uh, technical uh, lingo here. But if you have graduated from those two books, I think this is the book that you eventually want to get to because this will give you like the real implementation details and thorough understanding uh, of algorithms. But I do want to add a note here that you don't really need to know everything in this book. Like some of it is super mathematical. You don't get carried away by this. And that's also the reason that I did not recommend this book as number one, because if you've never really done data structures and algorithms, or you're just starting and you take a look at things in this book, you'll, you'll quit computer science. I'll, I'll promise you that. But trust me, once you, once you go through the other two books and you have a good understanding of what algorithms are and what sort of things they do, maybe like brush up on some math, like both those book covers, like some discrete math and probability counting, that kind of stuff, you'll find this uh, much more approachable. And then the final book I had for you is, this is this ties very directly to technical interviews, not just like uh, learning as a software engineer. It's called Elements of Programming Interviews. Um, this is a great book. Mine is an older edition. I think it's like eight or 10 years old. So it's in C++ and you can get this um, in Java and Python these days. So I'll link both of those in the description below. But this is a very technical interview question first approach compared to the other two books. So this is a great one to either use side by side as your learning topics or maybe go through all of them. And once you feel comfortable, start kind of looking into this. And the chapters here are organized in a very similar approach because like, like I said, like the topics are same, right? Like, so you'll talk about hash table it's gonna give you a brief introduction of what a hash table is but after that it's just gonna go to a problem right like for example design a hash function for a chess game to maintain the states your function should take the state and the hash code for the state and the move and efficiently compute the hash code for the updated state so this is like a real practical implementation of hash code uh, or a usage of a hash code right away right so the other question is let s be an array of strings write a function that finds the closest pair of equal entries so not only are you learning the data structures but this will actually give you real life examples on how you can use that data structure or an algorithm to solve interview type questions. I know a lot of you guys also have lead code, so maybe lead code and this is unnecessary, but if you think of it, lead code is like $160 a year, so that's more than 10 bucks a month, you know, but this is gonna be a, like 30, 40 bucks. And honestly, like if you can solve almost all questions on this book, you don't need anything else. Like this not only gives you thorough explanations of how this works, but it's written from uh, engineering leaders from all of the big companies, you know. So I highly recommend this book. So those are the three, uh, four books that I recommend for getting better at data structures and algorithms. Uh, one final note that I wanted to add is I do suggest that you at least have an understanding of basic constructs of programming and very elementary data structures like what is an array what is a string what are primitive types what is an int what is a float uh, how do you you know initialize variables or how do you write an if else condition how do you write a for loop while loop that's it that's that if you know that much then you'll start understanding what these are but if you if not maybe the first two books are still approachable but after that um you you'll get in trouble but um and for those um there are many free resources online that you can learn or if you're in school they're already probably teaching you but i will share a couple of other courses that are from uh, really good universities and they're free on youtube so you can kind of watch those videos together with these readings and that should help you out a lot and that's it if you have any questions write them in the comment below i'll try to respond to each of them if you have a question that pertains specifically to you then reach out to me on instagram and dm me and i try to respond to those too so until next time, see ya. Bye-bye.